Okay, welcome back everybody to the tutorial for ORC Framework. And I do want to point out that I made a mistake. Last time I said that we were using 5.6 of Unity. I didn't realize that I launched my Unity 2017.1. But let's just continue using that. I'm not completely sure if the ORC framework trial is compatible 100% with Unity 2017 yet, but if it's not, I know that it will be updated soon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead up to the ORC framework. First thing that we're going to do for adding the player is set up the combatant. So let's go to this tab that says combatants. And we're going to go ahead over to Combatant, Combatants. We're just going to go ahead and edit our default option here. We're going to be doing that for most of the things that we need to add. We'll edit the default for most things. That doesn't mean everything. We'll change the name to Brown Pants because that's the name that the tutorial uses. So we're going to reference our player character as Brown Pants. Now we're going to go ahead and go into the prefabs that we downloaded. Go ahead and select brown pants. And we're going to add him as the prefab. After doing this, let's save the settings. We will now create a game event to spawn the player. This is going to be our first look at the event window. And at first, it seems a little bit overwhelming, perhaps not the easiest thing to use. But it's a lot like something kind of like Playmaker, only I actually find this a little bit easier to use than Playmaker. What we need to do is add a game active group. Join the active group. Next, add game player spawn player. Edit the following setting. The spawn point has to be zero. Uh, the spawn point is used to define location when spawning the player. So the spawn point ID is used to identify what spawn point is actually in the scene. Now we want to save the event. So let's add a folder. We'll call it events. And we're going to say this is the start event. Okay, now we have to go to the town scene. So here we are. We are in the town scene. You can see it. We're going to go ahead and add a spawn point. We'll use the orc scene wizard to do that. So making sure that we are still in town, we're going to go ahead and Create an object, a spawn point. You can see that it's here. Let's lift it up a bit. We'll go ahead and spawn our player here right before the fork in the road on top of this little hill. The spawn ID number should be zero as it will correspond with the editor event that we just made. If you remember, we went ahead and said spawn point ID zero, spawn at spawn point zero. And now we want to make sure that we're going to execute the game event. So let's do this. Create empty, reset everything to zero, Position 000. I'll go ahead and just rename it. 
I'll just call it starter event. From here, we want to make sure that we have the event selected. And we're going to go ahead and add a component. That component is going to be an event interaction. We are going to go ahead and call the event start event. Push OK. And now we have to make sure that it starts automatically. We're going to spawn our player automatically when the scene starts, is loaded. Deactivate after event, enable this. Now there's this a little bit tricky part where we want to go ahead and deal with some of the variables. So the way that this event handles variables, you should take note of it and you should know that there is a resource on the ORC homepage in the tutorial section that links to an overview of ORC's variable system. Okay, so let's collapse the event settings. Now in variable settings, which is what we're using, we have quest conditions and we have variable settings expanded. Let's just expand variable settings. We're going to have to add one. It's going to be a valuable type value type variable. Let's call it player added. Make sure that it is disabled. And we're going to go ahead and make it a boolean. In the set after event, we need to go ahead and add another variable. This is a value. It's also going to use player added. Disable remove if it's not already. It's also the boolean. And then for value, we want to make sure that it's true. Okay, let's save the scene. Let's hit the play button. Nothing happens because what we have to actually do is we always have to launch from the main menu. <clears throat> you can't just be in the town and then push play like in Unity without work. With Orc, our game starter is in the main menu scene, so. Ah, it worked. So here's our brown pants. Now, we can move as of right now with the arrow keys. You can't use WSAD. It's not set up like that yet. You can change it. Later on, we'll change it. But for now, you can use the arrow keys and you can see, even though he's not animated, which we're about to fix, he can walk around. Let's go back into the framework. We're going to be going to base, controls, animations. Now, very briefly, you'll notice this. There's a pattern. It's like a repetition that you'll see within the framework where you have a type of something and then animation. So animations, animation types. You have it too when you see things like inventory. You'll have item types and then you'll have items. You'll have equipment parts. You have equipment. So this is just an early example kind of of how the actual database part kind of organizes its categories. So here we are again. Uh, you can you can see that there's animation types. This is there's like idle walk run. We're going to be using these in correlation. You can always add more. So if I have a game where I want to I have something called punch, like if I have mechanism that I'm using, even though we're going to be using legacy, I might want to add something here so I can invoke punch whenever it needs to be called. Now, it's really easy to do with this, and it's set up super logical so that you can do anything that you want. But now we're going to just use the ones that it comes with because the tutorial is following that. So here I am with animations. We are going to add, we're going to use them, let's go ahead and close this, 
So the base animation, we're going to go ahead and use legacy animations. We're not using Mechanin. Let's have three legacy animations. We have to use the legacy animation name. So I have brown pants. His idle animation is called idle, but it has a lowercase i. So we're going to go ahead and link idle up to idle. The stop fade is 0 0.1. Set layer, yes, true. Uh, the idle layer is going to be negative 1. Legacy animation 1 is going to be a walk animation. The name of that brown pants is walk. His legacy walk is a walk with a lowercase w. We're not going to change the layer. The animation 2 is going to give him a run. Lowercase run. The layer 0. So we set the layer for everything like that. Let's save these settings, go back to the combatants, go to combatants in the combatants tab. Let's make sure that our brown pants is set up for legacy animation. I've closed these tabs, otherwise uh, you'd be scrolling through them for a while. Obviously, we're going to go to animations and movement animation settings. He's already on legacy. You can see that you can do custom mechanism or legacy, which means if you have a third party asset like third person controller, for example, you can go ahead and use that if you want. If you go ahead and use custom and you can just do a basic setup. For the animations, we are using default. When it says default, that means we're using the default animations that we named over in the base controls. Use auto animation. We're going to go ahead and let the player combatant use the animations that we went ahead and created. And now let's save everything. And we are in the main menu, so let's push play and see what happens when we push the arrow keys to control our player you can see that the animation is working. He doesn't have much of an idle, but you can see it just a little bit. He is idling, he is walking. So it's all hooked up perfectly. The next step is going to be interactions with game objects in the world. And that's it for adding the play.